Yeah. What are we starting, <laughs> are we starting with? What are, wait. What to pray at this very special TGIS. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. It is great to see everyone on Shabbat. I'm so glad to see you in the sanctuary. We had a feeling that after so many months on Zoom, people would look forward to returning to the sanctuary and hearing the power of congregational voice. The question was, would people come back in the rain? <laughs> and we learned yes. So in all seriousness, it's really great to celebrate Shabbat together. Rabbi Harper is greeting people on Zoom. She's gonna come join us. I wanna acknowledge our tefillah band who's here, Rabbi Illinois who is just standing up here, <laughs> and uh, everyone here to celebrate Shabbat, our day of rest and reflection, our day to turn off the cell phones and to tune in what, to what we know to be truly important in life, and that's family and friendship and 
community, and our values. And so let's turn off the cell phones and put away the errand lists and the distractions, and let's make the last act of creation the gift of tzedakah. So while the adults introduce themselves to each other, we have coins for anyone under the age of 13 to represent us in giving the gift of tzedakah, and then we'll all join in worship together. So let's do introductions. People around you, say hello. Maybe where you're from if you're new to TBE. And then if you're below the age of 13, come on up. We have tzedakah for you. So as we fulfill this act of creation, we also look toward our festival of lights. And we invite you to join in with us. Sunday night. Sunday night is the first night. I might even want to say, oi, Hanukkah. But instead, we can sing a wordless melody together to get us in the spirit. One, two, three. La, 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 la. Is Sunday morning. Our Hanukkah concert begins at 4 p.m. Sunday afternoon. 4 p.m. At the end of the concert, we will light the first light, and then every night we'll gather on Zoom for our communal lighting at 7 o'clock. Let us now turn to Shabbat and for the lighting of our Shabbat candles. I had asked Hannah Carney and her mom, Susan, oh, there she is, to come up in honor of the dreidel dash this Sunday to help kindle the light of Shabbat. So. This is the fifth year? Fourth. Fourth year. <laughs> Did we miss a year for COVID? Got it. <laughs> Page 120 if you prefer a prayer book. If not, the words are on the screen. At home, we invite everyone to light candles as we spotlight you. Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Asher Kitshanu B'mitzvotam V'tsivanu Shabbat Shalom, and Hannah, thank you for your hard work, and welcome. Let us continue with the words of Lechad Odi, welcoming the Sabbath bride. Words can be found on page 138. Shabbat Shalom. 
شمار به زخار بری بوره خار هیش می آنو sanctuary as we welcome the Sabbath into our hearts, into our souls. you back as a Tefila band alum. Absolutely. Where was the recent place you were in Europe, the most recent spot? Venice. Venice. Well, we're glad you're back here Yay. at TBE. Great to see you. Thanks. Thank you. Let's continue page 146, the call to worship. Barho. Am I prepared 
Are you listening to my prayer? Can you hear my voice? Can you understand? Am I awake? Am I prepared? Ya la la, ya la la, ya la la. seated as we continue on page 150. Many of our teens have seen the musical Evan Hansen and uh, the creator of that role <laughs> is a very active member in his Jewish community and synagogue and grew up in the tefillah band yeah. <laughs> of his synagogue and composed this melody recently just as our teens are composing yeah. their own melodies. And so this is a beautiful setting of Ahavat Olam describing God's love for us, composed by Ben Platt, that is quickly becoming our own. So let's join with the cantor. And so I'd like for us to join with the melody one time through. And then this is actually meant, it was composed for the Platts I learned, Rabbi. And there are three brothers. If you didn't know, there was more than one Platt. There are three of them. And they all sing beautifully. And so there's an opportunity to add harmony into the mix. And Josh will help model that for us but please feel free to add your own harmonies, your own sounds to elevate our worship. Page 150. Ahavat olam, Beit Yisrael, Amcha ahavta, Torah umitzvot, Chukim umishpatim, O tanu, Let's try that together again. Ahavat olam, Beit Yisrael, Amcha ahavta, Torah umitzvot, Chukim umishpatim, Otanu. Lima de Kim umi 
nishpatim otanu limadeta. Ve'avat echal tazir mimenu le'olamim baruch ataronai ohev amo Yisrael. Continuing together words of Shema. Shema. And so we join together on page 158 for our words of liberation, highlighting our journey to freedom. Let's join together with Mi Chamocha. Mi Chamocha On page 161, we join together for our Hashki Venu prayer. Let there be love. May the light and love that we have in our hearts, may they shine to each and every one of us, giving peace and friendship as we think about this holiday season. Let's be joined by members of our Tefila band. And also our members of T-Band 2 that are here are going to help us because this is something we can pray with our, our whole selves. Amen. And so Lev and Elodie, come on up to feel a band. Let's join together. Let there be love and I 
understanding among us. Let peace and friendship be our shelter from thy storms. Let there be love and understanding. As we join together for our call to prayer, Adonai Sephatai Tivtach, God, open up my lips so I can declare your praise. Adonai Sephatai Tivtach V'yagid Tehilatech Adonai Sephatai Tivtah V'yagi V'yagi T'dilatecha Adonai, 
Elo hey nu velo hey avo te nu vimo te nu Elo hey Avraham Elo hey Yitzchak velo hey Yaakov Elo hey Sara Elo hey Rivka Elo hey Rachel velo hey Leah Ha El Hagadol Hagibor vahanora El Elyon Gomel Hasadim Tovim Vekone Hakol Vizoher Haste Avot Vimahot Ume Vig Ula Livne Venehem Lima Anshemo Be Ahava Melech Ozer Umoshia Umagain Baruch Ata Adonai Magain Avraham Vezrat Sara Ata Gibor Leolam Adonai Mechaye Hakol Ata Rav Lehoshia Mashiv Haruach Umorid Hagashem Mechalkel Chayim Bechesed Mechaye Hakol Berachamim Rabim Somech Noflim Verofe Cholim Umatir Asurim Umekayem Emunato Lishene Afar Michamocha Baal Gevurot Umido Melach Melech Memit Umechaye Umatmiach Yeshua V'neeman Ata Lehachayot Hakol Baruch Ata Adonai Mechaye Hakol Ata Kadosh V'Shimcha Kadosh Ukdoshim bechol yom ya halalucha sela Baruch ata Adonai Ha'el ha'kadosh Take time for your own personal and private Amidah either in the words of our Sidur, of our prayer book or with the words of your heart. When you're finished, you may be seated. We take a moment to ask the one who creates peace in the high heavens, to create peace for us and for all who dwell on earth. If you are still praying, we invite you to continue uh, as we join together with these words. Shalom. Be. 
as we, Max, that's a little loud. <laughs> as we pray for peace in our world, we also pray for peace and comfort for those who are in need of healing. So if you are thinking of someone this evening, we invite you to rise, to share their name aloud with us, with our community. If you join us on Zoom, please enter their names in our chat as well. Miss anyone? Page 371. Each week as a community, we also celebrate our samachot, our happy, joyous occasions, whether they be birthdays, anniversaries, or any other God-given moment that you celebrate. This week, I saw a quick hand from Sherry. And Jer do you have an anniversary? Oh, I thought you were saying an <laughs> anniversary, and I heard 90. <laughs> mazel tov on your big milestone birthday, Jerry. That is a that big... That is a great one. Mazel tov. So, Jerry, for on Zoom, people should know, else? Jerry Kassir just turned 90. Wait, Benji, is it your birthday? <laughs> Benji, is it your birthday? Ah, mazel tov. Yesterday was. Happy birthday, bud. Wonderful. Any others? Yes. Let me guess, it's your anniversary. Oh, it's your eighth birthday. <laughs> Happy birthday. Mazel tov. Yes, Max, your birthday was on Monday. Happy birthday to you, too. You can tell it's TGIS. We got more birthday announcements, yes. right, every time. Wonderful. Any others to share? Well, I have a celebration to share, Rabbi, which is one of the joys of being a part of a synagogue community is you get to share life with people, the joys, the sorrows, and uh, I want to say tonight, I get to share a joy with one of the first bat mitzvah students I ever worked with when I came to Boston as a rabbi and got to see her grow and get married and ultimately have children. And so I would like to call Dasha Hentoff forward with her husband, Rob Solomon, and their daughter, Aliza, their son, Jack, is at home sick. So we're thinking of Jack. I hope he's watching on Zoom. Who knows? But Dasha is the daughter of Steve and Amy Hentoff. Amy passed away. And it is a great, great joy to welcome Aliza to our community 
who is named for Amy. And Amy was a person of great joy and energy and love. And so I've asked Dasha to share a brief word about her mom and then ultimately uh, her daughter is also named for, uh, yes, a, a very important relative, which you're gonna hear about very soon, but I'm gonna turn this on so they can hear you. Thank Here you. Okay, talking to them. <laughs> Ari Rose Solomon, you are named after my amazing mom, Amy. My mom, Amy, made every day the most special day. Whether it was a big family holiday or a seemingly ordinary weeknight family dinner, she had a way of bringing our family together, making every occasion feel so special. We could all feel just how strongly she loved being our mom, and she was so present and engaged in our lives. That and she was the best cook and baker. My mom truly celebrated me and your uncles, Uncle Jake and Aaron, <laughs> who we were as people, our individual strengths and goals, and allowed us each <laughs> to follow our own path while cheering on all of our accomplishments along the way, big and small. Thanks, honey, I gotta read this. <laughs> she so confidently and fiercely believed in us and our abilities, even when we didn't yet believe in ourselves. I knew on my hair, thank you, <laughs> and made us feel like we could achieve whatever we set our mind to and so much more. Uh, when, I, yes, her. when I would hit a bump in the road, whether I tried one of her recipes on my own and it didn't turn out, or I was struggling with an assignment in school, she would support me through the process, uh, encourage me to... All done, stickers. <laughs> encourage me to make adjustments, be open to getting to the solution in a different way, and with her support, I knew I'd be successful. We'll see. <laughs> My mom didn't only tell us we could achieve whatever we put our mind to, but she modeled it for us every day. Rabbi, I know we're in temple, but I don't know how else to say this because my mom was one bad bleep. <laughs> when she was in high school, there was no women's tennis team, and that didn't stop her from pursuing athletic greatness and destroying the competition with the meanest one-hand backhand on the men's varsity tennis team. When we, oh, when we went to chemo, appointments together, she got dressed, and I mean fully dressed, and put on her makeup and said, I'm going to show this cancer who's boss. I'll never forget after she died, everyone said the exact same thing to me. Your mom was my best friend. She had such a meaningful relationship with her friends from first grade through adulthood, with her family, and also with me. She had an incredible ability to show others love, to cheer others on and be genuinely happy for other successes and support people in times of need. <laughs> Almost done. Whatever those in her life were going through, big or small, she was there. She showed up. Mama, mama. Okay. All right. <laughs> Being your mom is the greatest joy of my entire life. We're just, we're almost done. I now understand the joy Amy had about being a mom, and I am beyond fortunate to have two such wonderful children. I also see so many qualities of my mom and you, Ari. Just like Amy, you make every day the best and most special day. You create fun in literally every situation and make friends wherever you go. I see your fierce determination in accomplishing your goals, whether it be picking out and putting on your entire outfit, or mastering a new skill in school. You and I continue to bake Amy's recipes, adjusting them to be allergy friendly, of course, and I can feel my mom's presence when we're in the kitchen together. Ari, I know you and I will have our own special and unique relationship, but so far, I'd say we truly are the best of friends, and that makes me the happiest and luckiest mama. Ari, your middle name, Rose, is after Amy's dad, my poppy, whose name was Robert. I was lucky enough to know him when I was a little girl. Poppy was the smartest, most creative, and hardworking man. He became an engineer and started his own successful business. When he had a problem, he figured out the solution. Growing up, he didn't have access to a tennis court, so what did he do? He built one himself. When I was little, 
I would ask him the silliest and also the most complicated questions. How did the earth move around the sun? How fast did it spin? And why can't we feel it when we go outside? It would have been so easy to dismiss these questions, but instead Poppy would carefully and creatively take time to each, answer each and every one and explain it to six-year-old me. Oh, almost done. I remember <laughs> him explaining Earth's orbit around the sun with a bowl, a lot of M&Ms, and a golf ball. Ari, I hope that you inherit Poppy's incredible tenacity and ability to see a roadblock as an opportunity to create and build a solution that was so much better than what you could have originally imagined. <laughs> yes, we're almost done. I'm here. Not only that, but to relish the process itself. <laughs> almost done. Ari, unlike Poppy, I can't build things, as evident by me trying and failing to put together any of your toys. And unlike Poppy, I can promise you I don't have all the answers, but I can promise you that I will be there by your side to help support you and figure them out. I truly feel beyond lucky to have my two wonderful children, Ari and Jack, who's at home. I was given such an incredible foundation with the love that I received from my family and feel confident that Rob and I can continue to pass that on while you celebrate both you and Jack, who you are today, and who you become as you grow up. Thank you for letting me be your mama, and I love you. So Ari is receiving the name Aliza? Yes. Beautiful. So we grant her her Hebrew name in the presence of our community with these words. Eloheinu v'elohei avotenu v'imotenu, kayem et hayalda hazot la'aviha uleima v'ikra shema b'Yisrael, Aliza bat Dasha Risa, Uruvain Hillel. Yismacha b'yotzit chalatsa b'tagel ima b'fri bitna. Zot ha'ketona gedola. There she goes. Keshem shenechnasa labrit. Just as tonight they enter her into the covenant between God and the Jewish people. Ken tekanes la Torah ulechupa ulemasim tovim. May they welcome her into a life of Torah, and so we grant her her very own Torah on this day. Here, would you like to hold a Torah? A life of chuppah, God willing, celebrated underneath the chuppah, a loving relationship, and a life of masim tovim, of good deeds. And let us all say, Amen. For all of these things, we give thanks for birthdays, for family, for the gift of life, let us give thanks with the words of Shehachian. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Shehachianu Bekimanu Behegianu Lazman say mazel tov once again to your families who are here from Chicago and other places. Welcome to those who are home caring for sick individuals on Zoom. We thank you and say mazel tov. And uh, I hope that this is only one more of many sacred moments we'll share together. Rabbi Harper, teach us. With pleasure, let us hope. In the words of Torah that we read this week, in the Parsha called Vayeshev, we turn to the story of Joseph, Jacob's favorite son, and his 11 brothers. A story begun with a fabulous fashion accessory, and then dreaming, which leads to scheming, as Joseph's jealous brothers plot to put an end to their father's favorite son. 
One day, as Joseph made his way across the fields to see what his brothers were up to as they tended to their father's sheep, the brothers saw Joseph coming over the hill, and they turned to each other and sneered, here comes that dreamer who thinks he's so much better than the rest of us. Let's kill him and throw him in a pit. We'll see what becomes of his dreams then. As the 10 brothers laughed with each other and prepared to gang up on the unsuspecting Joseph, the eldest brother, Reuben, saw what was unfolding before his eyes. He knew that he had to do something to stop his brothers from turning on Joseph, but he was just one voice out of 11. How could he stand up alone against this group of 10 angry men? But still, Joseph knew, Ro sorry, Reuben knew that if he didn't do anything, something truly terrible would happen to his brother. So he gathered up his courage, cleared his voice, and cried out, shed no blood, let us not take his life. And miraculously, his brothers listened. And although Reuben was unable to bring Joseph back home as he had secretly intended, Reuben's brave intervention against the band of brothers, one person standing strong in the face of many who wanted to do wrong, saved Joseph's life. And later in the Parsha, Joseph has been sold into slavery in Egypt, and as he works in his master Potiphar's house, he's pressured by his master's wife, a person with power over him, to do something that Joseph knows is wrong. And despite the risk, Joseph stood up to Potiphar's wife, refusing to do as she asked, saying, my master trusts me, and I will not betray him. I will not do this wicked thing and do wrong before God. And even though it lands him in prison, Joseph stood firm against those with power over him, holding fast to what he knew was just and right. Both Reuben and Joseph teach us the importance of following what we know in our hearts to be right, even if it means standing up against the majority or standing up to those in power, even if it's at risk to ourselves. And in our tradition, we learn that God is with the individuals and the small groups who stand up in defense of their sacred beliefs, not only here in Parshat Vayeshev, but also in the story of Hanukkah. Hanukkah celebrates many kinds of miracles, among which is that the few prevailed over the many. The tiny band of Maccabees fighting against the massive and powerful Seleucid army struggled to regain their right to be Jewish, to practice according to their own faith, to control their own destinies and preserve their way of life. The priest Matityahu refused to bow before a Greek idol at great risk to his life, but he set an example for the Jews of his community not to do so either. Judah and his brothers, the Maccabees, fought bravely for years to regain control of the temple in Jerusalem, risking danger and defeat every day. And eventually, when that small army defeated the powerful empire's forces, they celebrated with a rededication of the temple, with the lighting of the menorah, and with public Jewish celebration for the first time in years. It is that bravery, defiance, and joy that we celebrate and re-exemplify each year as we light our own Hanukkiot and place them in the windows for all to see. Now, some people say when they're describing Hanukkah that this is a story of the weak prevailing over the strong. But I've always been bothered by that phrasing. Because yes, it's true that the Maccabean army was outnumbered by the great Seleucid army and that it didn't have the same resources, but there was nothing weak about it. Just like Reuben and Joseph, who were outnumbered, who had less power. They were the underdogs, but they weren't weak. In fact, they were the strongest of them all. Because in order not to be swayed by the majority, 
not to do something wrong just because someone powerful wants it, that takes incredible courage. We call this midah, this soul trait of courage, in Hebrew, ometz lev, which literally means strength of heart. Courage, or ometz lev, is all about strength, but not physical strength. It's mental, emotional, spiritual strength. Ometz lev is the strength to hold fast to our convictions, to what we know is right and good in the face of things that might make us feel afraid like being in the minority, or standing up to power, or taking a risk. Ometz Lev is not about being fearless. Rather, it's about being able to move forward in spite of our fear. We are the inheritors of a tradition maintained by generations of Jewish people who were filled with Ometz Lev, with the strength of heart to be true to their beliefs, to be true to what is good and right in the face of many who tried to tell them that they were wrong, those who tried to stop them from practicing their faith with pride and joy for all to see. And as it was in days of old, so too it is today, that we are a people filled with Ometz Lev, with the strength of heart to be true to our beliefs, to be true to what is good and right in the face of those who try to tell us we are wrong, those who try to stop us from practicing our faith with pride and joy for all to see. And so, as we kindle the Hanukkah lights this year and place them in our windows in order to pirsum hanes, to advertise the miracles of Hanukkah, we light that same fire in our hearts, the fire of Ometz Lev, the fire of dedication, of strength, and of pride. So I wish you a Shabbat Shalom and an early Chanukah Sameach. In just about a month, we're going to be welcoming a special guest artist into our community, Jacob Spike Kraus. And so I've asked for Ryan, who's dear friends with Spike, and for our Tefila band to prepare an anthem to lift up Spike's sound. Thanks, God. Nes gadol hayasham Nes gadol hayasham I believe In the power of a little bit of light And I believe that the smallest among us can win the fight. I'm not afraid to show my face still glows, and so, so everyone will know. I put these lights inside my window. Light up, light up, light up the night. Jewish people had to take a chance The oil glowed They lit one not knowing if it would last mm, They took a leap of faith With those dreams to chase And so, although they could not know Light began to glow and light up, light up, light up the 
the night. Light up, light up, light up the night. Eight days of candles burning bright. Light up, light up, light up the night. Now it's up to you, and I believe in you. It's true, I do, I truly do. <laughs> so tell me truly, do you want to light up, light up, light up the night? So let us return to our prayer service to our door, page 586. We will invite you to rise if you are able for Aleinu. Aleinu l'shabeach l'adon hakol L'atet g'dula l'yotze b'reishi Sh'lo asanu ki goye haratzot Velo samalu ke mishpechot ha'adama Sh'lo samachel ke nukahem Vegor aleyu ke chol ha'mona V'anachnu kohim u'mishtachavim u'mohim Lifnei melech malche ha'mlachim ha'kadosh paruchu Think of those who have lit up our lives, those who are no longer with us, those whose yard sites or anniversary of their death we remember this week, and those who we have lost most recently. If you are thinking of someone this evening, we invite you to rise and share their name with us as well as their relationship to you. Do we miss anyone here in the sanctuary? We also add the names of our Shaloshim list, those who have died in the past 30 days, Marjorie Benditson, Robert Burak, Jay Meltzer, Jules Sack, and Douglas Tischler. And we have been asked to read the name also of Carol Kerr. Let us all rise as a community in support of these mourners in our midst as we turn to page 598 for the Mourners' Kaddish. Yitkadal v'yitkadash me rabba. Amen. Be'alma divrach hirute v'yom lich malchute. Be'chayechon v'yom echon u'v'chaye d'cho v'yit Yisrael. Ba'agala uvisman kariv imru. Amen. Amen. Yehe shmei rabba mevarach le'alam ulamei amaya. 
vit barach vit tabach vit pa'ar vit ramam vit nase vit hadar vit hale vit halal shme du kudesha bricho le elamin kol bir khata bashirata tush be khata benekhmata da amiran be alma fi imru amen yeh shalama raba min shamaya ve khayim alenu ve al kol yisrael fi imru amen o se shalom bim ramav who ya I say shalom alenu ve al kol Yisrael fi imaru amen. Ya se shalom, ya se shalom, shalom alenu ve al kol So let's remain standing because we are going to make sure we have some energy towards the end of our service. But a few quick announcements. We want to make sure that you know that Sunday is a big day in our community. In the morning begins our dreidel dash. You can still sign up to run, walk, volunteer, or just show up to eat waffles with all of us. We still need some help volunteers. Is that what you're trying to tell me? Sure. If you want to sign up, you can even sign up the day of. So please just show up early in the morning, 8 o'clock. You won't be late if you're here early. 4 o'clock. 4 o'clock, come back to continue our Hanukkah celebration with an intergenerational concert. We will be releasing the QR code to our first ever intergenerational album. And it's really great. So I hope you'll be there. There's a lot going on during the week of Hanukkah, but we want you to know that we will be on Zoom virtually each night, um, except for the first night we'll be here. 7 p.m. every night we're going to light candles on Nokia. And I think that rain and sickness may have kept some of our uh, K-7 to Shabbat dinner attendees from attending. Ah. So if you are without a place for dinner tonight, mm. there is plenty of food <laughs> next door. <laughs> you don't food. even need kids. We probably have extra. <laughs> so please, please come join and join us. us if you don't have a place for Shabbat dinner. Excellent. Let's join together with our closing song on page 625, which means that Rachel and Alex and Gideon get ready because you are on deck, okay? Cool. All right, let's join together. Adon Alam. You might recognize the melody. Hanukkah style, right? Yeah, here we go. Adon Alam Come on forward. We are so excited to be celebrating their Ba Mitzvah tomorrow. But Gideon, I wanted to say, we're so glad that your family joined us this year. And I understand that you became Bar Mitzvah at KI, where you grew up just this past Shabbat. So we want to make sure that we all say Mazel Tov. And Mazel why don't you do tov. us a favor and hold the Kiddush cup. And Rachel and Alex, come close and give us a good start. Rachel and Alex become Ba Mitzvah tomorrow. Uh, and we are just so excited to be celebrating with you. So on the count of three, a good, sturdy baruch. One, two, three. Shabbat Shalom. 
Pretty Take sure it's up. just juice. Complete, yeah, tastes good. You can have some more. It's cool. <laughs> it's juice. <laughs> Alex and Rachel, will you do us uh, the favor of uncovering our challah? Beautiful. It's like it's Rosh Hashanah. <laughs> All right, let's join together. Can you hold it up? Baruch <laughs> You can take a bite of the challah, and together we say to the three of you, to Dasha, Rob, and Elise and their families as well, a big hearty mazel tov. We know you'll do a great job tomorrow. Let us all say to each other, Shabbat, Shabbat shalom. shalom. Let's Good try Shabbos. light up the night. See Once you Sunday. Again, Happy Hanukkah as well. That we practice. <laughs> light up, light up, light up the night. Check out that.